Welcome to Mission Possible. I'm your host, Marina Hanna, and by the grace of God, today we'll be talking about trusting in God beyond all difficult circumstances. I'm joined today by my brothers and sisters. My name is Megid, and I went to Santa Cruz, Bolivia. My name is Miriam, and I was also with Megid at, in Bolivia. I am Andy, and just last summer I went to Kenya, um, Kenya and Tanzania. All right, and today's scripture that we're going to look at is from Jeremiah 32. And there God tells us, I will make an everlasting covenant with them, and I will not turn away from doing them good. So here we have a God who's telling us that, I make a vow to you that I will always do you good. And today we're really going to be talking about, do we trust in that? Do we trust in God's promises? And Marianne, you were saying that while you were on a mission trip, you trusted in God. What did he do? We were doing a home visitation, and in Bolivia, um, there's some areas that are not the greatest to be in when it's dark. Mm -hmm. So the visitation went a little bit late and got dark outside. And um, we, in order to get to that house, it was so far, we had to take three different types of, three buses. Um, so we got dark and we, we needed to get back, get out of this area as soon as possible. So we wanted to take a taxi because that was, it. we couldn't find any of the buses. And we asked the taxi and then, um, because he saw, he noticed that my sister and I were foreign, um, he, he, he put the price up so high. Mm -hmm. We didn't have enough money um, mm -hmm. to, for the taxi. So, we, so the servants are with us, they said, okay, don't worry about it. Um, you, know, you know, we were here doing God's work. Everything will be fine. And they have, in, in Bolivia, everyone comes back saying, no problema, because mm -hmm. that word is said like a hundred times a day. So we started uh, t walking. My sister and I are, are really scared. We're panicking. And they had this calm, this peace with uh, the, the servants, and like, don't worry, don't worry. So we walked just another block, and then there was this bus, empty, the one that was supposed to take us all the way to church, just mm -hmm. empty, just waiting there for us. And we got on, and, and everything was fine. Wow. But it took that couple of moments to really realize that you needed to trust in God, right? Yeah. And that same no problem is the same as Hakuna Matara. What yeah. do you have yes. about that? Um, so the second day in Kenya, we were flying from Nairobi to Maseno. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were flying. Our flight was at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. And uh, some, for some people, we thought it was after 5. So we got to the airport at, I think it was 4.40 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then by the time we, we unloaded all the luggage and all that stuff, we went inside and it was 4.50. And Shireen, the group leader, she walked up to the desk and to check in and they said, well, the, that's closed half an hour ago because that's because mm. the flight is going on in 10 minutes. So Maurice, um, uh, a missionary who was with us, took me and Ramonda and he started praying and, and he, he prayed that the flight would be delayed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I was there. I, I, I prayed with him, but I, 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 he trusted in God. I, you know, I didn't know what could happen. And uh, they reopened. The, the check-in desk. Wow. They yeah, they took us in. Um, we had to we had to pay extra for, for for luggage, and the amount that they asked for was exactly what, what Maurice had in his pocket. So he just took it out, he gave it to them, and uh, we we went on the plane. Wow, it's funny yeah. that you say that because I met you in Kenya and I did not know this story, it's but <laughs> there clearly you go. God was working we, way we, before. We met you in Maseno. See, exactly. It was, it was when you guys yeah. arrived after God had delivered. <laughs> yes, after wow. God had delivered. So we have these experiences from our mission trips where we really see that all we need is to trust in God and He will do the rest. Like, we give Him our five loaves and two fish and He blesses and He gives the rest. How come when we come back, the devil kind of messes with our minds and we find ourselves not trusting in Him, not trusting in this promise that we just read that He's going to make, that He's already made an everlasting covenant with us. What do you guys think is the issue there? Well, personally, I think, especially in the North American society, we rely too much on our minds, our logic, our thinking. Everything has to make sense, mm. right? And we don't necessarily always, you know, think from here. Mm -hmm. We always think from here. Mm -hmm. And God works through here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we are always, through our logic and reasoning and whatnot, in, in a sense, shutting God out and speaking over his own voice. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, we're always thinking the impossible can never happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And always God, you know, is always telling us, just give us a chance, give me a chance, give me a chance. But we're just so busy thinking about ourselves and how we could do this. Mm -hmm. And we don't focus on how he could do this. And I think we're, in a sense, putting ourselves as the center of our lives mm -hmm. instead of 
God mm -hmm. at the center of our own lives. And I love how you say that because in Matthew it tells us that with God all things are possible. And, and like you said, we think about ourselves when really we, we're here not to serve ourselves but to serve others. How do you guys feel, like, like how does this relate to our lives when we think that with God everything is possible? Whether in Bolivia, in Africa or anywhere or especially here at home, I can serve God. How, how do you guys, does this resonate? Or is it difficult? Am I, is this absurd? Like, um, Before we left to Kenya, we were told to, to be flexible with, with our schedules because we, we won't know what's going to happen and things might change last minute. And like Megan said, like we, we have all these plans here. Um, and we fill, like if I have time for 10 tasks, I fill my day with 15. And then I start complaining that I don't have time for these five. And part of God's promise to us and trusting in Him so that He can do the impossible through us is me dedicating some time for Him to work, right? If, if He tells me, Andy, go do this, I'm like, okay, no, I, I, I need to, you know, that's in my calendar, I need to go do this task. It's I don't have time for that. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'm not even letting God use me. And then I start to lose trust. I, I, I lose faith thinking that he's not working. In the meantime, I'm not doing the small part that I need to do, which is at least give him a little time mm -hmm. to work. I personally found um, a really um, important point when I went down to Bolivia in that a lot of the problems in Bolivia, especially with the children, is that their parents are not there. They're effectively orphans. Like the parents are either uh, working abroad or some sort of uh, unfortunate circumstance, uh, such as you know they were they were jailed, they were they they were whatever, mm -hmm. and so a lot of the times th these children, you know, they grow up in broken families or are raised by someone else, mm -hmm. and that is one of the main reasons why they have problems down there with with you know uh, teenage pregnancies, with mm -hmm. a lack of uh, lack of education because there's no emphasis on it. And so I started thinking, you know, family is actually very important. Mm -hmm. And the best service you could actually do is to your own family. Like, we always say, oh, I'm going to serve. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we think of is, how do I do it outside my home? Mm -hmm. We never think of, how could I do it within my home first? Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, and so, you know, yeah, St. Paul even himself to the, to the, to, to in, 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 in Timothy was mm -hmm. always saying, you know, a bishop is first a uh, you know, a good manager within his home before mm -hmm. he is within mm -hmm. his diocese. Mm -hmm. So I think that that was one of the main lessons that I took was to, you know, focus on your immediate family uh, uh, through love, through, through, by giving them, you know, be generous with your time, mm -hmm. be generous with your, with your tolerance, be generous with, with what, they, what you can give them in terms of what they need, mm -hmm. and then focus beyond that. It's funny that you say that because on my last day, uh, before I left Kenya. I was all fired up to come back and to have this relationship with God in my room, closed doors, you know, and it was just about me and God. And right before I left, um, the father there told me that you, like, you've been given this amazing and wonderful gift by God. And he doesn't want you to keep it within the four walls of your room. But go out there, go to your family first and foremost, like exactly like you said. Every word that you said resonates so much in my life. And you're saying, serve your family, serve your friends, your church, and keep growing. Serve just someone that, that walks past you in the street. Do you guys have that same, do you guys get that same message? Or is it all about just taking the big step but forgetting about the small one? Do we really need to look within ourselves, within our families first? Get the nourishment there, have Christ established there before we go on to take on the bigger missions in life. <laughs> Go ahead. Not all at once, guys. <laughs> We're fighting. I think here at home, um, we sometimes we, we it's very hard for us to see why um, we can we can do we can do God is we do anything with Him, it's because sometimes we're f we're f we're, not, we're far. I think when we we get to go to missions, we kind of always kind of we try to go on a spiritual high. So we prep and we um, we we pray and we, we we read and we try to prepare ourselves spiritually. I think back home we get busy, mm -hmm. and I think we lose 
that, that touch and that connection. As if like someone is drowning and you throw them the ring, but they're just too far to, to hold on to that ring. And that's why they can't be safe. They can't, they, they can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same thing with us, is that we come home and we sometimes slack don't, off. we slack off in our mm -hmm. spiritual lives. And mm -hmm. I think, and that's why we need to keep that. We need to keep that spiritual high that we, we, we got from going on these mission trips where we've prepared ourselves in order mm -hmm. to go. Bring that back. Stay on that spiritual high. Because I think once you're on, on that spiritual high and you don't let it slack, then then you, you see these little things. You see that, you know, that homeless person on the street who, who just needs those $2 uh, to, to maybe get a coffee or whatever. But, you know, before the missions, you said, like, no, 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 he's going to go do whatever with it, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to partake in that. So these little things become vivid because you, you're so close to, to, to the, the one who can, who's impossible, who can do anything. Yeah, and that's, a lot of the time, that's what the Lord asks us, is anything too hard for God? And I think when we honestly sit with ourselves and we ask ourselves that question, we realize that no, nothing is too hard. But what do you guys think about the misconception where we believe we go on mission trips for ourselves? We come back, we serve ourselves. Is that really why we're here? Um, before we left, Bishop Paul um, told us to do something crazy for the Lord. You know, just as a person in love <coughs> will do something crazy for their partner he said do something crazy for God go ahead and do it and if it's for God like God cares about everyone else mm -hmm. so like like what you just said it, no it's not me because I'm supposed to love others as much as I love myself mm -hmm. and I, I need to love him first I need to put them before me and um, I think the media plays a, a, be a very big factor in that it's keeping everyone busy with themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we all have our phones, our um, laptops, the music we like to listen to, the favorite TV shows. Mm -hmm. And we, we lost touch with our families, we, have, we lost touch with our friends, and everything is just online. Um, the internet is great, you know, it's got really good information, but sometimes it just, it takes us away from the people that we're supposed to minister to the most, mm -hmm. which is Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the family, the home. And so we forget to trust in God, right? Like we become so consumed with everything around us that that trust in God somehow gets lost at, at, at whatever level. And then that ultimately leads, like you said, to forgetting to minister to those around us. And, um, and I think that's really what's key about today's message is that when we trust God, we really trust that, he's, that we're not here for ourselves. We're not here to serve us only but we're here to serve those around us. And um, if we look at Jeremiah, um, just the next verse to what we started off with, it says, the Lord says, I rejoice over them to do them good. God is telling us, like, not only have I made an everlasting covenant with you, not only have I promised that I will never stop doing you good, but I will rejoice in doing that. It's His good pleasure. Like it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom of, the kingdom of heaven. And it is His good pleasure that we spread it onto everyone else around us, that we allow everyone to partake um, in this amazing love. And just to close off, like it says in Psalms 23, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God isn't waiting for us. He's already pursuing us. He's already giving us so many gifts. And all He asks us to do is just, like we discussed today, to trust in Him, to trust in His love for us. So um, I thank you guys for listening today. And uh, always remember that we are here to serve our Lord and to be His good and faithful servant.